I'm really interested in in what an accelerationist feminism might look like or an accelerationist politics of sexuality. I think that it's kind of quite widely perceived accelerationism as being quite masculinist. You know, there, there's been a lot of criticism of the manifesto form as being quite sort of thrusting, quite masculine, and there is a, a widespread perception that as a sort of clustering of ideas it's not very hospitable to women and um, that's something that I kind of have never really felt or registered myself and I'm quite interested in taking what accelerationism can give me and using it as the basis of um, uh, developing a feminist politics. Um, what that might look like or involve is still kind of uh, being sort of formalised and being thought about but I'm, I'm looking back to a lot of techno feminism from Shula Myth Firestone onwards um, a lot of really strong feminist thinkers who've been thinking about uh, what sort of technology, particularly automation and cybernation, in various spheres can do for us. So there's uh, uh, been work addressing um, the rise of industrial technologies and the way that um, cybernation and automation in the industrial sphere can lead to greater um, instability, higher unemployment, but may also function as a tool for the um, elimination of, of drudgery. Um, and then there's been, this has been applied to the domestic sphere, to the, the feminist household. Um, and then also, I mean, with Sheila Myth Firestone in particular, she's very famous for her work in terms of um, reimagining reproduction. So thinking about how technology can liberate women from the, the, the tyranny of their own biology, as she controversially calls it. Okay. Nick, it's Randy. Okay. Uh, so I'm Nick Cernick. Uh, I'm a co-author, along with Alex Williams, of uh, the Accelerationist Manifesto, uh, which is really this attempt to sort of diagnose some of the problems within the contemporary left, uh, one of the internal sort of reasons why the left has failed over the past uh, few decades. Uh, and in its place, the attempt to sort of set uh, what we call an accelerationist politics, uh, which is really this attempt to recover uh, the idea of the future, the idea of progress and the idea of modernity as a sort of grand overarching narrative, um, really drawing upon a lot of sort of Marxist ideas about a post-work society uh, and the emancipation from work as sort of this next grand step uh, that humanity could possibly take. Uh, so this involves, you know, rethinking the nature of modernity because you can't just return to a sort of classic narrative about modernity. Uh, so rethinking this in light of post-colonial and post-structuralist critiques. Uh, and really, in a sort of sense, it's this idea that um, sort of the future can come back and speak to us ourselves uh, and try to voice a sort of option uh, available to us if we um, mobilize a political project behind it. My big reference points is um, uh, the trans feminist Beatrice Preciado and her work on testosterone. So she has this, um, uh, she uses black market testo gel, which is a synthetic androgen that's administered through the skin, to kind of hack her own body and see what ingesting these substances does, how it transforms her, how um, how she responds to it, and she calls it the auto guinea pig principle. So instead of thinking about how um, sort of the how pharmacopornographic biocapitalism produces things that get used in quite limited ways, she's interested in thinking about okay, well, we have the, we are within the landscape of pharmacopornographic biocapitalism. It exists. You know, pornography and pharmacology are two of the big subject-producing industries at this particular historical juncture. We can't change that but we can try and find a way through it, we can try and find a way to, um, to, to resist it through seizing the tools that we've got. And she, this is what she does by taking testosterone in this black market fashion and seeing it how, how it changes her body and talking and tracing out these various different histories of drugs as a way of materially altering um, your body, your experience of the world and doing something kind of quite radical from that. The manifesto and the work sort of that we're doing around it 
is very much centered and trying to instill this sort of utopian imagination as well. Uh, so sort of Mark Fisher's work on capitalist realism uh, is the sort of closing down of social possibilities and the closing down of social imagination, uh, the inability, the inescapability of capitalist realism, the inability to think outside of that. Um, the sort of famous uh, Jameson line about the in, uh, uh, it's easier to imagine the end of the world than it is to imagine the end of capitalism. And sort of what does this mean in terms of uh, the loss of any sort of utopian vision for today? Uh, we have plenty of dystopian visions, uh, but we've lost the sort of sense there could actually be a better future. Uh, so a major part of our work is to try and um, rethink these sorts of ideas uh, without making it just a sort of abstract utopia, uh, really a sort of concrete utopia uh, that plays upon existing tendencies in the world uh, and elaborates what a potential future could be on the basis of these tendencies. Uh, so instead of trying to say that we can't turn back, and this is I think maybe the fundamental gesture of accelerationism, is to say that we can't go back, we have to go forward. Uh, and what does it mean to think about going forward if we want to develop a better future?